So this is a scene that I drive by quite often and uh, here we are at the end of January in southern Spain and uh, what I'm looking at really are these um, trees, orange trees and the yellow flowers that are on the other side of the road and I thought I might go and sit amongst them but from this side of the road where I can, can park the car then actually I get quite a good view of them. So what I'm hoping to paint is something like this and trying to catch the oranges on the tree and the yellow flowers underneath with those greens. And I'll probably get rid of the, the brown hill behind and just go into the blue sky but uh, we'll see how that goes. I, I, might, I might put that in as well. Just like I like the colours. Uh, so that's really what I'm going to go for and there's some nice darks under the tree as well. So my kit I've just set up here and um, I've just got a little seat to sit on. I've got a little easel that I made which um, I will show you in another video how that all fits together but it's uh, very light, very quick, very easy. It fits into a small bag and I've got my gouache paints and pots for water and the sketchbook to paint in. So let's get going. So I've painted in the sky with a bit of uh, cerulean and, and white and there's a yellow strip along the bottom of uh, lemon yellow uh, for the, the flowers that are going to be down there. And what I'm doing now is just putting in some orange marks roughly where some of the oranges will go. I'm going to cover some of this up but I wanted some of the oranges to, to show quite brightly so I'm painting those onto the whites of the, of the paper and the sketchbook. And now adding in the, the dark underneath, underneath these trees, just marking that in now. The wonderful thing with, with gouache is that you can come in with lights, you can come in with darks, you can mix it up, you can cover over things um, and, and there's a great sort of ease in painting in gouache which you don't necessarily have if you just go for transparent watercolour where you have to be very careful about which layer you put in when and for that reason I just enjoy painting in gouache especially if I'm outside and I'm um, trying to sketch like this and capture something very quickly. So what we've got now is the kind of feel, I'm trying to get the feel really of the of the of the trees there. So they're very scrappy, they're very spotty. And normally when we're painting trees we want to come in with a, a sort of a base layer that's fairly fairly flat and then we can add some details into that. But for this I wanted to create some of the complexity that I'm seeing in front of me. So I'm coming in quite quite spotty really with different colours, so light greens, darker greens, uh, they're all mixed up from uh, the blues and the greens that I've got on the palette, adding a little bit of burnt sienna in every now and again just to dull it down. But basically I'm just trying to come in and spot in where I see the lighter colours and where I see the darker colours. Now if you look at the trees you can see there's areas that are more in shadow and other areas that are more in light. And so I'm trying to keep to those but actually um, make it a little bit more, more spotty, a bit more characterful 
for what I see in front of me. At the bottom here I'm just trying to put in the darker layer and some of the spots of green in between the yellow flowers. I'm going to build this up. I'm going to put some more yellow on top later on. So I'm just working at this just to um, give the feel of there being yellow and green down at the bottom. Not working on particular flowers or flower shapes or anything like that. Just giving the impression of yellow and green at the bottom. In the same way as I'm working in the trees and trying to put in just that feeling of the various leaves uh, and the bunches of leaves that I can see there. Now obviously I've sped this up, I've sort of doubled the speed on the camera um, just so that you don't get bored and so that we can work through this a little bit uh, quicker but I hope you can see what I'm doing, that I'm really just spotting in things. It's, it's a different way of painting trees but it, it can work uh, if you want to get that effect of lots of things happening within the tree. Again, it doesn't work very well in watercolour, but in, in gouache you can come in, you can put the lights on top of the darks, darks on top of the lights, you can mix it up, and that's absolutely fine, because it's uh, because the light colours will cover over dark colours as well. So I'm just continuing to do that, mixing in greens. I've got three trees here, and I don't want to merge them together, so I'm trying to keep them separate, and now I'm just spotting in some of that yellow, Mixed in with some white to make it a bit thicker, spotting some of that on top just to try and create that foreground. So here it is back indoors and I think it's worked out pretty well. It's interesting because I was painting it with the sun on it as you saw uh, which normally they say not to do uh, but I found it re it's really helped me with the colours and the depth of colours because some of my paintings that I've done outside um, in the sketchbook before have turned out to be a little bit more sort of wishy-washy, a little bit paler. Um, and so this is actually brought a depth of colour and a strength to it, which is more realistic of what was actually there. I've got some other um, pictures of yeah woodlands and trees and things. These were painted when I was sitting in the shade in a woodland. Um, and this one as well with, with the pond there and the shade and things. And again, I've just tried to bring in... Um, some of the, the tangledness and some of the, the, the complexity that you find in a wood, but trying to keep it simple with large shapes and just put a little bit of detail on the top with the painting I did. Now, a lot of it is fiddly detail and little bits and pieces, um, which none of it is clear, it's quite abstract, but actually it does work to produce the effect that I wanted, the complexity of what was there in front of me. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you've enjoyed the video, uh, please subscribe, uh, please like it, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.